white people food. One of the internet's favorite jokes of all time has been dunking on unseasoned, undercooked, barely edible slop that children of Yakub like to call food. It's not hard to find countless of examples of people posting culinary monstrosities such as these, and subsequently writing comments about how white people can't season food even if it killed them. Hell, if anything, it makes you understand why the British became the best sailors in the world. However, I am here to say that that's not really the case and dispel the myths about the incapabilities of Caucasian people in the kitchen. As white people food is much more than the failed attempts of morbid obesity and freedom land at culinary arts. To start off, the schema of white people food originates from America. Most usually it is associated with incorporating very plain ingredients such as bread, cheese, cream, potatoes and potentially some sort of unseasoned meat. Most usually the dishes that would be considered white would be things such as a bologna sandwich, potato salad, some sort of casserole, or just basic stuff like slightly salted steamed or boiled vegetables with barely salted chicken breast. Usually when these dishes are compared to the cuisines of other peoples in America, such as Indians, Latinos, Africans, and the Chinese, a lot of it seems underwhelming and laughable as the others are rich in color, smell, and flavor. However, these types of dishes are quite the tiny sample of white cuisine. A lot of these types of dishes that I mentioned first found their origin from Northern European settlers, such as the English, Irish, Germans, and Scandinavians, who were mainly at the time disenfranchised peasants. Because of their poverty, many couldn't afford to cook with anything else other than the most basic of ingredients. Their climate didn't help that much either, as there was also a smaller extent of produce that could be grown in their native countries of origin. Later on, after the Second World War, America experienced a boom of new ways of food processing and making, which gave birth to stuff such as the trusted American Jello, spray cans, cheese, and infamous long-lasting sliced bread. Convenient, sure, but also a cardinal sin against God and everything holy. But again, these are just a very few nitpicked examples and not really representative of the whole cuisine. White people food essentially comes from European cuisine and much like any region in the world, Europe's cuisine is quite distinct from the others. Now, first to tackle the main elephant in the room, seasoning. Despite the popular stereotype of white people not seasoning their food, this simply isn't the case. Again, due to Europe's overall climate, which isn't the best for growing in most spice plants, the cuisine had to implement less exotic spices. While in Indian and Middle Eastern cuisines, it is common to use turmeric, red pepper, saffron, and curry, Europe implements more of salt, black pepper, rosemary, paprika, dill, nettle seed, and horseradish as their main spice. Most of the spices implemented in European cooking are much more subtle and intended to bring out more of the main ingredients' flavor rather than overwhelm the dish with its own aroma. In League of Legends terms, spices in Indian cuisine would be the main carry, while in European they play more of a support role. Even though they're not the most exciting of spices, they're still important even though they're not the main component that carries the dish. The cuisine's main strength is the freshness of the ingredients and the techniques used to cook the dishes. Although Europe's climate definitely wasn't its friend when it came to growing exotic spices, it is quite useful when it comes to preserving ingredients due to its lower temperatures. Which as a result gives the meat, veggies or any other dish a much juicier and fresher taste. One of the main reasons why spices were used as much as they were is because of the hot temperatures. As the heat can often get quite out of control in many parts of Asia and Africa, Africa, spices were used a lot of the time to preserve food for longer periods of time, and even sometimes to mask the taste of it if it went bad. While in Europe, the climate and different techniques of preservation helped it last longer and improve its taste. Europe and many parts of North America also have a lot of farming land rich in minerals and nutrients, such as black soil and volcanic dirt found in Italy, which also allowed for the growth of more juicier ingredients. However, another thing that plays a role in the freshness of Europe's produce today is also the regulation of food. The EU, although quite often can be quite a bureaucratic pain in the ass, also has quite strict food regulations compared to the US, which definitely help in benefiting the taste of the local cuisines. So even though dishes between America and Europe are shared, America's quality of white people 
people food can be quite lower due to the amount of preservatives and other additives in food products which as a result can mess with the final taste and texture of the dish. This doesn't only extend to proper dishes but junk foods as well, as their quality and taste can vary quite a bit between the two continents. Just look at the sizes between American and European chickens and cows and the ingredients and additive lists in chips, soda and other junk foods. However, arguably the main thing that characterizes European food is technique. In India, one of the main techniques is to first fry up the spices to draw out their aroma. In Japan, the ikejime method is used when slaughtering and cleaning out a fish to preserve its freshness and flavor. Meanwhile, in Europe, much of its culinary techniques originate from France and are intended to chemically alter the ingredients and bring out their flavors, such as sauteing, flambéing, grilling, frying ingredients in animal fat, and poaching. Another major difference between European cuisines and that of non-European cuisines is speed. In many Asian cuisines, a large number of dishes are intended to be made fast and efficiently, while in European, they take a longer time as they have to go through several processes or be slow cooked to draw out the flavors, as is the case for many stews, soups, and chorbas. Of course, this doesn't mean that other cuisines don't have similar processes, for some of their dishes as well. Japanese food can also take a bit of preparation, as well as Chinese. I mean, Peking duck and ramen don't just get snapped into existence. It is quite a tedious process to make both, and there are many other dishes from very southern non-European countries that also take an eternity to prepare. And I don't want to imply that dishes prepared faster are somehow inferior. I mean, we've all been hungover at one point, and uh, kebabs and tacos tasted like the tears of Mother Mary herself. However, this style of longer dish preparation is more prevalent in European styles of cooking and serves a similar function to spices in more Eastern cuisines, as both methods intend to add flavor to the food. European cooking also relies quite a bit on sauces. Some of the most important sauces in the cuisine are velouté, hollandaise, bechamel, tomato, and espanol. In more eastern cuisines of the continent, condiments such as mustard, mayo, and sour cream also play an important role in drawing out the flavors. It is also worthy to mention that sauce making is no easy task. A lot of time, it is quite a time-intensive process where the control of heat, the amount of ingredients, and the way of mixing are of utmost importance. As a result, in a casual setting, this step might be skipped from time to time or substituted with a lower effort or industrially made sauce. In Eastern and Northern Europe, pickling and smoking meats are also two popular techniques. Due to the even lower temperatures here and a shorter growing season, the people from these regions had to adapt when it came to preserving food for the winter. As a result, pickling vegetables and fish became a signature of their cuisines. Smoking meats also became a popular method as it made it last for a much longer time. And although not a lot of seasoning is utilized in the making of these types of dishes except for a bit of salt, dill and vinegar, these processes drastically changed the chemical composition of the foods that new flavors were brought out which rendered spice unnecessary. Instead of having these represent white cuisine, here are some examples that are quite popular and a much better representation. In Germany, a popular dish is pork tenderloin smothered in sauteed onion and mustard. This dish utilizes all characteristics of European cuisine as the tenderloin is baked for a while and then covered in a sauce made of onions, mustard and dill. A popular side dish with meat there is also braised red cabbage, which is additionally infused with apples to add extra sweetness and bacon for the savoriness. The country also has a variety of breads and pastries that all differ quite substantially from one another and are composed of delicate flavors and textures. In Italy, a lot of pride is taken in the pasta. There are so many varieties of it and they are usually intended to be made fresh. They can vary in flavor depending on the sauce used for them, such as the classic tomato sauce, which consists of mainly tomato and sometimes extra veggies such as onions and carrots, seasoned by basil or oregano, or it can be carbonara, which is made up of parmesan parmesan, butter, garlic, and pancetta, or it can also be infused with pesto, which is made of fresh basil, garlic, pine nuts, and again, parmesan. Further, these dishes can be combined with a variety of meats, smoked or fresh, or vegetarian options, and again, although not heavily seasoned, they taste divine. In Eastern Europe, a variety of dumpling dishes are popular, such as pierogi in Poland and cepelina in Lithuania. 
However, in Russia, for example, the main dumplings are pelmeni. They are made by putting minced meat consisting of pork, lamb, beef, or even fish with onions, garlic, and pepper into a basic dough made of flour and water. After being boiled, they are served with a dipping sauce of sour cream or mayonnaise dip mixed with dill. And although kind of basic, it is quite cozy to eat on a cold snowy day. Georgia, although European, sticks out from the status quo as within its cuisine it implements quite a bit of spice and seasoning. For example, its most popular dish, King Holly, a soup dumpling, is heavily spiced. Its minced meat is seasoned with cumin, cumin, satureja, chili pepper, and onions. It's then twisted into a simple dough where the meat releases its juices and creates a broth within the dumpling, which again is of just of divine taste. In Denmark, a known cold, wet, and uh, forgotten by the sun country, a popular dish is tagged flask, a fried pork belly garnished with boiled potatoes dressed in parsley sauce. Again, not the most seasoned, however, with frying out the pork belly, its fat is released, which is perfectly paired with the boiled potatoes and sauce, which all serve to accentuate the taste of the main ingredient. When it comes to long-cooked savory dishes, some of the best examples consist of the Italian osso buco or the French bouffe bourgnon which just take it to a whole other level. However, within Central Europe, none other is king than the Hungarian paprikash. The dish is made up of cut up chicken thigh that is nicely cooked within a sauce made of broth, sour cream, tomato juice, and seasoned with paprika, and then served with freshly made egg noodles known as nokeli. And there are so many other examples to name. So to say that this is white people food just doesn't do justice to the cuisine as there is so much more to it than just spice. Anyways, let me know what you think. What are your favorite dishes? Let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you to all the members who support my work. If you wish to support me as well, consider becoming a member like them, or check out the ironic show shop.com where you can support me by purchasing some of my merch like my shirts or board game anyways my name is Janos and you've watched living ironically in Europe hey, hey, why